What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of Hardcore Minecraft Project Ozone 3, episode 7. And if you haven't already, there are a couple of shorts I've put on there showing uh, some spoilers, so if you don't want to see that, check it. don't check it out. But uh, yeah, we did fight the Chaos Dragon and the Wither recently. And apologies for the delay on these. I am trying to sustain what people want to actually watch. Uh, but I'm playing this anyway, so I'm putting it on here. You won't get an alert if you're a sub because I don't want to annoy the people that don't want to watch it. Um, but of course, Minecraft is one of my favorite games, especially when it's hardcore. And especially, especially when it's heavily modded to automate all the things. So you can see the new floor, the new setup of the base. The squares are around chunks and the idea is to try and remain with this obviously the side there where you can see a bit of grass will be extended to all grass i hope and the side that's not got grass on will likely be for generation systems uh, all the different machines and astral sorcery that sort of stuff i will obviously make it larger when i need it and there will be a platform underneath as soon as i get the power up and running for cables and stuff just to make life easier because I don't want to fall to my death trying to just power something or cable something up or set some rules. The mob farm is coming along. I'm moving over to the mob utils, mob grinding utils, I think it's called. Um, tools, so the proper little grinder there. Nice and cheap to make and it's powered by a redstone block. Um, it does do a lot of damage to you as well so don't get stuck in it and then some vector plates to push everything in using the vacuum pump then to collect all of the good days and all of the xp and then that gets piped accordingly nice and simple working just off dark at the minute with i think three levels in and the idea here is that this set of drawers will collect the items that I want to keep, helping keep that chest reduced and then when they fill up I can go and put them in the base. Of course when I can afford to build some transport transport pipes I will do so and get them into our main storage. You can see at the minute I don't have any vector plates. This is only 2D um, so the actual spawning area is 2D. When I get the vector plate sorted out, it will be uh, more of a huge area. Uh, and then if we start getting some drops of evil or some spawners, that's when I will, of course, extend it. Okay, so for progression and for capacitors, capacitor banks, cables, power cables, all of that sort of stuff from Ender IO, we need grains of infinity. The only way to get grains of infinity is setting fire to bedrock. And then there is a decent chance that it will then give you some grains of infinity. So, the best way to do it, I found, because there is obviously one block on the map, it's a void world. So I've come to the nether, found some bedrock, nice big patch, and then I've set fire to it all. And you can hear that popping sound in the background is uh, grains of infinity being produced. Wait for the fire to go out, collect, and see how you get on. In the future, we'd like to grow those. Of course, there is a lot of farming we're going to be doing in this. Growing um, the crops, growing the items. It is end game stuff, and a lot of magic required. Britannia, etc., is the main one for the seeds. So, we will need to get some mana and Britannia up and running to do that. And then, obviously, later on, you get things like miners, which just eat the world. And I love doing a proper quarry. Um, and then setting up um, Twilight or wherever I like, just eating entire worlds with it. And then of course, later, later on, you can get the Rod of Animation, which you then make a block of anything and turn that alive. And that's where you start getting things like the uh, Infinity Ingots and duplicating them. But that is way in the future. So, so far, with a decent setup, decent base now built, and it's all lit up, so we are safe. We've got a, a good amount of ores, as you can see there, from sifting automations working nicely for us. Slow, but steady and consistent. The things that we're struggling for are more of the uh, dust, sand, sipped items, so your redstone 
diamonds, emer I mean emeralds are debatable, you don't really use them for much. We're using them for our weapon and pickaxe and stuff, but that's because we have them and we don't use them for anything else. And they are decent quality. Uh, upgrading the furnace and a few other things as well you'll need them for, but very unlikely. But redstone is something that I am going to be needing shortly because when we get to electronics uh, and all of that sort of stuff, redstone is likely to be the most used item. Finally now making the alloy smelter from Ender IO, the first level, the simple alloy smelter as it's called. Needs power, of course, to do anything, but this is where we can start making the next step of things. The crude steel, um, the energetic alloys, and all the various different alloys that you can make for Ender IO that make up the conduits, which are the power, liquid, and item pipes. The energy pipes though are significant significantly amended in this you have to do them up in tiers similar to well exactly the same as the the armor so you start with the crude steel then it goes through iron and gold and copper and silver and then after about six or seven tiers in you get to what you're used to seeing if you've played the mod before and that is the first tier of energized conduit which is redstone and steel. Uh, from there, you then go through more tiers up to the energetic, which is the gold, silver, sorry, gold, redstone, and glowstone. And then the final stage, I would imagine, is the pulsating, which is. Uh, I can't remember the recipe. It's expensive, though. Requires a lot of ender pearls and emeralds, I think. Um, but yeah, we, we'll we'll build it as we go. As long as we build a power station or a power setup that is significant to do that, we should be good. Now, what I'm working on at the minute is the very first and the easiest option for generating power, and that is a water wheel, because it's consistent. Um, so is wind, but you need a lot more to do that. A lot more wood to make the sails, and then you need a lot of hemp to make the industrial hemp to make the actual sails that make them even faster. Plus, it's part of the quest anyway. So, treated water wheel, then you just need a water source on top of it. It spins, generates electricity, and that electricity will then run our alloy smelter. It doesn't obviously seem to have a quest for the wind turbine. I'm not sure why. They are better than the, um, the water wheels, IMO. But like I say, they need more wood, a lot more wood, a lot more treated wood. So with the kinetic dynamo, you use that for the windmills and for the water wheels. You apply the item to it, then spin it and it will generate power. The more you spin, the faster it spins, the more power you generate. And the more items you've got spinning, the more power is generated also. I don't know if this works in terms of it's going to generate more power if I put them singularly on three dynamos. I didn't test that, to be honest. Um, but... All we need to do now is get some water to flow over those fins that it flows in one direction, of course. If you do it both sides, it won't flow at all. And that will generate us some electricity. So I'll build up something, try and make it look okay. Uh, it's not going to be a fancy build because it's not going to be there for very long. I hope. And this is what I came up with. And using the immersive engineering just to power that one thing for now. Spinning through, I've put the fences there to stop it from chucking water all over the base that I don't want. Um, but we need pulsating in, iron ingots so that we can get the nuggets. The nuggets then make us our first conduit, which is the item conduits. Our farm is working well. In fact, we're getting too much experience, too many loot bags. So we need a way of... Either opening the loot bags automatically, binning them, also collecting, having bigger tanks for the experience, liquid experience, or destroying it. We don't want the orbs to back up. We don't want the items to back up because it will cause lag. So that is something we need to look at. The first pipes now are set to empty the tanks. So if we get items in the chests, my storage chest that I just put random crap in, that they have a slot in the drawers, they will automatically be exported via that conduit pipe and put into that said drawer. Let's have a look here at our cobblestone generator. Working nicely now, 
five, six. Um, and we'll get that upgraded as well in the future. Maybe more if we need it. We are going to need a lot of cobblestone for the deep dark. Put a wall around that as well. It looks a lot nicer. Again, it's not permanent. It is something that we will work on. Silver armor. You can cheese the armor by getting armor drops from the mob farm. Um, but it won't do anything for your quests. So, note to self, to complete the quest, you have to actually follow it all the way through. Uh, starting with leather and making your way through pretty much every ingot available in the game, it seems, or almost, anyway. It's a long way, a long road, um, but it will be worth it. Annoyingly, some of the armors I've noticed are actually, some of the stats that they have uh, are better than the one after it, but... Inevitably, you're just working your way all the way through until you get infinity armor where you are immune to everything anyway, I believe. Um, but when we start getting up to the advanced armors, so the next tier of uh, armor stand, that's where I'll feel comfortable. Or safer, anyway. So now as we wait for... Now, well, first alloy the crude steel ingots you can see I'm making here. I also need to do the empowered items. So that means the empowering certain items. The ones I have on me, so coal, redstone, lapis, diamond, emerald, and iron. And they get pushed through the empower. It's next to... There it is. Yep. That thing. You just throw them on. I've set it up so that... Uh, the it's on pulse mode using the redstone torch so that it automatically activates when anything falls on that slab, plate slab now if you use a stone one it won't work because the items aren't heavy enough so make sure you use wood and as you can see I'm just doing that now getting the stick redstone torch putting it onto pulse mode and now what will happen is that will only fire when I chuck something on it and immediately convert it. And the atomic reconstructor would do that to all of those items. The later game, then you turn them items and you upgrade them into their empowered variants. Of course, we'd have power, but not much, so we need to give it some time. It holds 300,000. But you can see we're using it as much as it's storing it. So it's the very beginnings. Uh, we need to do the iron ingot. To get the Anori. I swear I was in my inventory. I read it out. I know I did. There we go. Perfect. And now with a bag opener helping us out opening the bags. And if it becomes a problem still with the bag opener being too slow, which it isn't actually slow, it's decently quick. Um, we'll then just bin them. Or at least bin the lower grade ones and only open the epic and legendary ones seems to be working well like i say the bag's being put in there is not a problem and it opening them is decently quick it's just getting the goods out of there as well and of course we're getting it back up the only thing i need you need to worry about with this or i worry about this is it happens regularly when i forget something and then it causes not game crashing lag but lag to the point that you can't move anything you get like one frame a second and then you have to try and fix it at one frame per second, which is not fun. Um, because it's, say, 2,000 items all over the floor or something. But luckily, the computer I'm, I'm using has quite a lot of items all over the floor. So we shouldn't see many of those, if any. And I'm inclined to delete things before I uh, let the game crash anyway. Because there's a lot of stuff. It's always nice to just collect everything, just in case. But there are games where there's as many mods as this one. There are stages where you realise that you just don't need that much stuff. Now finally the automation is to pull out the items that have been unbagged. So all of the loot that comes out of the bags goes into this silver chest. I then want that to put any of the goods that have come out of the bags into the storage drawers. Because, of course, the storage drawers are a filter for what I want to keep. Anything else will effectively be deleted.
and then filters to go in the trash cans to make sure that we delete those things. Now you can see I've changed it up slightly because what I'm actually going to do is integrate it all together so that there is a bag opener, but also there will be trash cans in the same line. And using filters, it should be much simpler. The reason I canned the original build with the bag opener as it was is because it's just too much stuff. It's going to be five, ten minutes before something's overflowing again and causing lag. So I couldn't just leave it like that. There was no point um, going on and doing another mod or doing something else. This would have caused problems before that. So. You can see there, there's a lot of crap building up. All of that stuff in there technically is rubbish. None of that I really want to keep apart from the torches. Otherwise, they'd be taken out and put into that left-hand side into the drawers. Of course, there is a chance the drawers could fill up and then it would back up anyway. But these discs are really annoying and them tablets that only stack once are really annoying as well. Jumping away from that, I am using my rack to get the items I need now. Firstly, resistance is the cheaper option. Regeneration is expensive, but obviously I had the experience for that and we've got plenty more coming in. So resistance and regeneration are the ones I want to cap first. Resistance, obviously, I will cap first. I think it's three levels for both of them. But the regeneration is really expensive. Both for the rack, 200 per level. 200 rack per level. And then for experience as well. It's like 60-ish levels. So 60-ish levels, experience levels, and 200 rack per. So, But obviously, you can see we've already got level one. So we've got a nice, decent incline into always being healed, which is basically like having a golden apple. Not a notch apple, but a golden apple on us at all times. The resistance, of course, will reduce any and all damage physical uh, it, permanently. So it's definitely something that you want to have if you don't want to die. And we are in hardcore, so we do not want to die. We are going to have to start fighting bosses at some point, And I really don't want it to be squeaky. I'd rather just fly through it, make it entertaining, but with the best of the ability that we've got. And then, of course, the Chaos Dragon, which is the end game here. The end goal is to defeat the Chaos Dragon. That is going to need... A lot more than what we've got and resistance and regen is not going to help us with the chaos dragon i don't believe because chaos damage is a totally different entity altogether and that is what you get from the end game armors and hopefully you noticed but if you didn't we do have obviously a many alum pickaxe and hammer now uh, of course the items are not too difficult to get both ardite and cobalt are reasonably simple to get in the nether. As soon as you get there, pretty much, they stand out like a sore thumb. You just need to be able to break them, which, of course, we could with the emerald. So we've got a few of those. Bring them back. Mix them together. You get manialium. I don't know. I, I, yeah, that's how I'm saying it. Uh, and then you can use that to make your pickaxe and your hammers, etc. They, of course, are very good. They're not anywhere near as good as the end game stuff, of course, but it is definitely a huge step in a mod pack and it's certainly the best you can do from the overworld type place that we're in void and the nether of course the nether i think the only thing better than that is the debris debris as it's actually called and the ancient stuff which i haven't even looked for yet to be honest because it's not that much better i don't actually know if it is any better than malia i don't think it is but it's likely a resource we're going to need in the future. But to be honest, by the time I need it, I'll just go down to the bedrock vein mine until I see the very rare amounts. Or cheese the crap out of it and use a digital miner. This automated system's working very nicely for me. I do need to move it back a bit, I think, behind the cobble gen. So it's a bit more out of the way. Also, I could do with adding a few more auto-crafters on there so that it can do other ores like from the nether as an example. But it's working. The diamond, yes, the diamond furnace is doing a decent job. Of course, as soon as we can level that up, we will. Because every time you level it up, it gains a huge increase in speed anyway, automatically. And then you can actually add an add-on for it that does that too. 
continuing to grow the field farm it's a bit of everything it's just land for the good mobs to spawn of course so your sheep pigs cows chickens all that kind of stuff also liquid cows hopefully uh, if we get lucky and if we do get lucky then it's that something that's usable i will kill but cool uh, the ones that aren't usable just to try and make sure that we don't get to the cap a lot of hemp growing now i finally got some seeds growing because as soon as I move to the windmills, I will need this to upgrade them to get the maximum amount of energy out of them. And of course, I made because they are easiest to make some dirty magical crops so that we can get some, some dirt coming from there as well. We do still have that same automation with the bonsai trees, but at some point I just want a crap ton of soil dirt because that's what we're going to need. That whole side is supposed to be grass going on. Of course, we don't need grass. We only need dirt and it will grow. Um, but we're about halfway. If you look at the mini map, you can see that. We're about halfway. So we should, moving forward, be um, filling that up soon. These Lumium crafting ingots that I'm trying to look at now has the option to do the moon with the moonstones and that's what we actually require now you can use a diamond or you can use an unstable ingot the unstable ingot is what killed us in the last series funny enough i will have to do it uh, when i choose to do it is another matter uh, why did that not work what did i miss oh it has to be the gems not the ingots that's right And with another successful trip from the nether, I come back with a load of cobalt and I'll die again to make a crap ton of mini LM. I'm just going to now try and automate this process. So a hopper underneath that basin will automatically take out the metal block that you've created once it's cooled. We then need a translocator or a pipe of any description to take the liquid from the actual smelter itself now what you can see here is i'm using the standard one that comes with it where you just right click it and using a redstone clock you can automate the right clicking so what that's going to do now the clock is just going to tick every every two ticks maybe four ticks um and automatically fill up that basin once it's finished it then puts it in the bottom and rinse and repeat and it will just continue to keep making whatever you put in there over and over again and it just saves you having to stand around doing it. As soon as you get liquid pipes or a translocator, which the translocators are one of my favorite items for moving items really quickly over short distances uh, because it can only work in one block. But they need ender pills, and that's something that we haven't quite got to put as much as I want to yet. I mean, we could, but it's just spending for something that's not really worth it. If we had a load of stuff to do, then fine. At the minute, though, I'm looking at immersive engineering items, as you can see, to try and get some of these quests out. Also, to get specific things on the quest line, which is for the fermenter and squisher or squasher, crusher, whatever it's called. The thing that you use for making um, ethanol and plant liquids and oils and stuff. However, we are over time now, so I'm going to end the episode here uh, and come back for the next episode to see if I can kill myself then. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like and your comments are welcome. As always, take care. Goodbye. <laughs>